Hello, everyone. Welcome to Finding Power in the Pause webinar. Today, we are going to be pressing the pause button. Right now, this webinar is being presented at noon central, so I hope you grabbed your lunch and um, joined us for this lunch and learn, I guess you could call it. So finding power at this stage of the game means that you are reclaiming what you believe, what's most important to you, what your values are, so you can be headed in the right direction, your direction. Your direction is unique from anyone else's and you have the power to navigate your life. So I want to just jump right in. Power, power stands for P, perspective, right? How we see things. O is observation. W is wonder. E, evaluate. R, recalibrate. And then we're going to sit and just reflect over the things that we've discovered and share things. And then I've got a really special opportunity for you to go even deeper. Because I know these webinars, they just hit the surface, don't they? They get the juices flowing. They get your curiosity peaked. And it's important to me to not just like give this to you and then like let you go. Bye. Have a good day. No. I want you to be equipped and ready to reclaim that power that you have within you so you can live the life you truly want to live. So First thing I want to talk about is perspective. Perspective is just how we see things. And guess what? Newsflash, right? We all see things a little differently. But here's the thing. I have found a tool that helps you understand the way you see things and the way other people see things. That's called the Enneagram. You ever heard of it? Obviously, if you're following me for any length of time, you know I am obsessed with the Enneagram. Enneagram, Ennea means nine. Gram me, means like points on a diagram, right? So the Enneagram talks about nine ways, nine perspectives of the way we see things. So which type are you? Do you know? You can always take the Enneagram test. I'm going to put that link in the chat here. And let's see, my notes, the Enneagram test. My Enneagram test is different than other Enneagram tests you might find online, but we will all agree, uh, those of us who have created Enneagram tests, they're not 100% accurate. That's why I always offer a free consultation to confirm your type, to clarify anything, answer your questions, because it's important to me that you are on the right path that you've got your right type because that's your starting point. So anyway, perspective, how you see the world, how other people see the world. There's no right or wrong, right? And so the way you see things today is different than the way you saw things when in your 20s. So when you're taking that Enneagram test, I want you to think back to in your early 20s? What were you like? What did you enjoy to do? What did you do when you hung out with your friends? What kind of job did you work? Were you in college? What, what degrees or classes did you enjoy? I ask you to go back there because your perspective in your early 20s, your ego was huge and you were just all about yourself. And you know, that's just part of you know growth and development. You are usually coming out of the home of your parents and where you grew up and, and that oversight and starting to become more independent. And so it's all about me. What do I want to do? What do I like? And we just kind of uh, instinctually and reactively do the things that we like to do, the things that um, we find pleasure with. So think back when you're taking those tests. How did you see yourself? How did you see the world? And a lot of people ask me, 
can your Enneagram type change? Because I'm much different than I was in my 20s. It's true, right? Enneagram core type does not change. But we change. And sometimes it's hard to see through things that we've been through. Trials that we've been through, um, situations, life, career, all that stuff gets clouded and in the way of who we truly are. We also have been listening to messages of who we're supposed to be. And in our early 20s, we're usually in a place of doing what we want to do. And it's a little closer to who you truly are. So those core motivations, what um, lights you up and what scares you to death, look back to your early 20s. You will notice a pattern. You will see things that are in your life now that will resonate and kind of, you know, go along with the pattern of your life. And so those are the, how you want to kind of answer those questions when you're taking the test. Once you get that perspective, your perspective, you will learn how to understand why you do what you do. You'll understand what trips you up. You'll learn to love and accept yourself better. Sometimes we struggle with that. We know the stuff that we've done. We know our thoughts in our head and we can be hard on ourselves. So the Enneagram helps you stay focused and say, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. This is the way I am, but I want to be better or I want to be softer or I want to be stronger. And so it's just a tool to help you navigate those things in your life. It also creates empathy with yourself. Like I said, we can be hard on ourselves. I know I can beat ourselves up. We listen to that, you know, inner critic and we need to give ourselves some grace and some empathy. And then when we can do all those things, we can do it for others. That's really the goal, right? To love others as we love ourselves. We got to love ourselves first so we can love others better. Okay. So if you haven't taken it, go ahead and take it after this webinar. Um, if you know your type, you know what I'm talking about as far as perspective. So I'm just going to share my screen because if you downloaded the workbook, which here's the link to download the workbook. I'll put that in the chat too. And if you haven't downloaded it already, we're going to go to our first writing prompt, our first journal prompt. Let me share my screen. And we're going to start with P, in power, perspective. Just, I'm gonna give you a few minutes. And if you're watching the replay, press pause until you're done writing. How do you uniquely see things? How do you see the world? How do you see your life? Through what lens are you focusing through? Maybe finish these phrases. I see things as, fill in the blank. I need to fill in the blank. And then on your own, if you run out of time here, ask yourself, what is in the way of changing my perspective? All right, I will give you a few minutes to journal and process some of those things.
Okay. Take your time. Come back to it. Use those prompts even like once a month because things change. You can even use your perspective journal prompt to help you understand a particular situation. Am I seeing this correctly? So the next, um, oh, I wanted to add ways you can change your perspective. If we're not seeing things accurately or we're trying to understand someone else's point of view, you need to step out of your comfort zone sometimes. Put yourself in their position. Put yourself in a different position. And this is where the Enneagram comes in handy too. Um, the way I teach how to use the Enneagram, I have you use your two wing numbers to gain a different perspective on your situation or decision that you have to make. Um, another way to change your perspective is to challenge those negative thoughts. Just flip it around and see if they're true because we don't always see things that 100% true. Practicing gratitude. I know I have, um, I struggle with this and I struggle with my wins and my accomplishments and, and realizing the things that I've done. So what I've done actually this year is gotten a, a desk calendar and every day I'm writing down something positive, something I'm grateful for, something that went well and focusing on those things. Not that things don't go well. It's just, um, I was focusing on those things too much. And this has really helped me say, Hey, life's not so bad. Um, so practicing gratitude, spending time in nature. I'm a nature person. This time of year is hard because it's winter and it's cold and rainy and snowy. And yet there's still ways you can spend time in nature, even if it's looking out the window. I was just glancing out the window here in my office the other day and I, we have some trees in the back and I'm like, what is that? Is it someone's dog? It was a deer. It was three deers. Then my neighbor texted me on the other side. She said, there's eight deers by my, by my shed. If I wasn't just looking out the window, I would have missed that. So you can still connect with nature when you're inside and connect with other people. One reason why I love webinars, I love workshops, I love group coaching. There's so much power when women come together and share their insights, share their struggles. It just helps you realize that you are not alone and you're not the only one. So, and it gives you a different perspective too. All right, let's go to the next section, observation. So P, perspective, O, observation. This is where you want to notice how you think, notice how you feel, and notice how you behave in your actions. Just notice, no judgment. There's no right or wrong, good or bad. Just notice. Get curious, right? So your thoughts. Ask yourself, what are your thoughts telling you? And are they true? Are the, is the story that you're telling yourself true? How do you know it's true? When you're talking about your feelings or your emotions, ask yourself, what emotions do you feel on a regular basis? What's like the common theme? What are they telling you? Our feelings are telling us something and we need to listen to them. We need to tune in. Again, not judging them. Just what's their message? If you need help identifying your emotions, I'm gonna go to the feelings wheel here. And again, you can download this and share my screen. You can download this on my website, but just for right now, this is what it looks like. Let's say you are struggling with feeling really sad 
I'm not talking about depression, just talking sad. I'm just sad. That's me a lot of the time. Get more specific. What does that, what flavor does that sadness take on? Is it apathy? Eh, whatever. Is it depressed? Is it rejected? Then I want you to go to that next circle and ask yourself what would feel better, right? Than the way I'm feeling to be accepted. If I'm feeling rejected, the opposite's almost like feeling accepted. Okay, why? Goes down to love. So you're working from the outside in. You can work from the inside out too, but for this purpose, identify your emotion that you're feeling. It's usually on those outside circles. Acknowledge them. This is what I'm feeling and accept them. Oh, I'm feeling this way because I'm desiring love or peace or security. So that you can download as well. And I'm going to put that in the chat. Feelings will all these goodies that I'm giving you. Okay, there's a feeling as well. All right, so we've got observation. Notice your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions or behavior. I'm going to give you some time to journal. Share the screen again, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I hope that was enough time for you guys. So perspective, observation. Next, we're going to talk about wonder. I want you to dream. Remember when you were a little girl, you dreamed of becoming fill in the blank. You know what I dreamed about? <laughs> I dreamed I wanted to become Miss America. Mm -hmm. I remember my dad would sing me the Miss America song. Here she comes, Miss America. When I would walk down the stairs after a bath in my, in my robe and I just felt like a queen and I loved the way that felt. And I, and I knew that that was a way my daddy was telling me that he loved me. And so growing up, I was like, oh, I want to be Miss America. <sighs> Obviously, I'm not, <laughs> but you know what I did? When I graduated high school, I ran for our local town's pageant because I wanted to make that dream come true. I didn't know what my chances were. I didn't know what I was doing, but I wanted to live my dream. Guess what? I won. <laughs> I became um the miss um queen of of my town and i remember telling my parents that and they're like you did what i don't know that they knew that that was a dream of mine and so i want you to look back again and just say what were my dreams when i was a little girl are those still my dreams what was it about that 
that I was looking for? Why did I stop pursuing it? Sometimes they're totally unrealistic. Like I want to be an astronaut. Not many people get to do that. But what if you were? What if you did pursue your dreams? I wonder what would happen. I wonder if you did achieve those goals. What if you fill in the blank, right? You can also ask it the other way too. What if I didn't take that job? What if I didn't speak up? What if I didn't fill in the blank? You know what what should go in that blank? Those things that you're thinking about right now? Yeah, those things. So dream. Embrace that beginner's mind. Is there a new hobby or skill you want to learn? What if you learned it? What if you got really good at it? And what if you didn't? What if you could do that thing that you've always wanted to do? What if things stayed the same and you didn't do it? Play out that scenario all the way through to the end and see what happens. Okay, share my screen again. Observation to the next one. There's the feelings wheel again. We're gonna go to wonder. Just get curious. No judging. There's no right or wrong. There's no foolish. Just dream for a little bit. Okay, let's move on to the next section. We did perspective, observation, and wonder. Now it's time to evaluate. This is when we start questioning things, right? I want you to use this method. Explore, end, and extend. What are some things you need to start doing? We're still in January of 2024. We're in the new year. You may have started doing something. Part of your New Year's resolution, um, goals, word of the year, whatever it is. What did you start doing? What do you need to start doing? Do you need to start exercising more? What do you want to start this year? Do you want to start a support group? What do you need to stop doing? What needs to end? Is it complaining? Is it people pleasing? Is it an unhealthy habit? What needs to end? And what needs to extend? What's working? What's going really well and you want to keep on going, right? Double down on that. If it's bringing you joy and fulfillment, you know you need to keep doing it. So extend that. So what do you need to explore and, and extend? I'll give you a couple minutes to journal. Share screen. Thank you. There you go. Evaluate. Explore, end, and extend. What do you need to start, stop, and continue doing? 
And then in your own time, you can ask yourself, what is one small step I can take right now? For example, one thing I started doing this year was exercising more. Now I don't exercise that much. I do a 10 minute yoga every morning. I like walking. I like hiking. It's just hard to do in the winter. But you know what I did? I started adding time to my yoga practice. So now I do 15 to 20 minutes. It can be that small of a step, right? Take a minute to journal that down. Press pause if you're watching the replay. Okay, let's move on to the last point. We've done perspective, observation, wonder, evaluate. Now we're on to recalibrate. I like to think of fine tuning an instrument or um, adjusting something to make it work at its best, right? So now that you're more aware of what needs to happen, like in this last um, evaluation section, how are you going to make it happen? What are you going to do? What are your action points? What changes do you need to make in order to perform and live your best life? What things aren't resonating anymore? Those things that need to end, do it, end them. Is it your career? that you used to love and now it's the biggest stressor of your life? Is it the people that you're hanging out with? They're just not bringing out the best in you and you need to find a new group of people. <laughs> Relationships can be really hard sometimes. There are habits in your life that are preventing you from reaching your goals and you need to adjust that. What have you given up doing? that used to bring you joy, that you're not doing anymore. Bring those back in, right? Invest in yourself. Prioritize what you value. Prioritize yourself. It's hard to do. I mean, if you made a list of all the people in your life, where would you be on that list? Would you even be on the list? Get yourself at the top of that list. It's not selfish. Because you want to be with those other people. You want to serve those other people with your best self. Get yourself up there. Learn to say no. That's something you need to adjust a little bit and understand when is it a good time to say yes and when's a good time to say no. Get rid of distractions. This is my number one distraction. Well, there's my granddaughter. She, she can distract me anytime she wants to. But the phone, social media, eh, it's hard to put that down. But imagine what would happen if you did. What's one thing you can do today? This is our last screen for this journaling section. And let me go back here, evaluate recalibrate. I need to change the way I fill in the blank. And then ask yourself, who can hold you to this? You need some accountability to make sure that you're doing what you say you're going to do. Keep this promise to yourself, but tell someone else about it so they can check up on you.
Okay, so that's finding power. You're feeling more powerful now, more confident, more equipped to do the things you want to do and live the life you choose and not the one people have been telling you to live. I would love to hear back from you guys what you took away from this portion of it. And like I said in the beginning, I don't want to, let me stop sharing. I don't want to leave you hanging. I don't want to say, here's this information. Here are these journal prompts. You took a half an hour for yourself. We still have another half hour if you'd like. Because this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the true change happens when you go that next level deeper. And when you're ready, it can have a transformation. You can have transformation. I mean, you can look back at today, a year from now and say, who was that? And I'm so glad that I invested in myself. So I wanted to share something with you. I have a digital course that I want you to be a part of. It begins the week of February 5th. And we are going to go beyond the Enneagram so you can get to know yourself, love yourself, accept yourself so you can love others, right? This is a sixth module course that you can download and do in your own time. So the first module, we will be talking about values. We talked a little bit about that today, but here is where you are actually going to practically and go deeper into what's most important to you and how to take action towards those priorities. In module two, you're gonna confirm your core Enneagram type. You are going to understand what makes your heart beat, why you think the things you do, and understand how you see things. The third match, well, we're going to go even deeper into the Enneagram and the tool that you can use to help you unlock decision making with confidence. You're going to use those wing numbers I mentioned before to gain a different perspective on your situation or decision you need to make. Module four, you are going to understand where you go in stress and how to relieve that stress. I mean, who doesn't want to know how to relieve stress? But we're all a little different, and I'm going to teach you exactly what to do. Module five, again, you're going to go deeper into your subtypes and instincts to create an understanding of how you and those around you see the world. Some of us like to be alone. Some of us love to be in a group. And that makes a difference, especially when we're talking about relationships, whether it be, you know, at, with our partner or at work. And then the final module, you're going to reflect and apply and spread your wings and go forward as the woman you desire to be. So all six of these modules have a value of $1,200. That's how much this course is worth. But you know what? I know you guys, and I can understand financial situations right now. I'm giving it to you for $4.99. That's it. When you pay in full, you get the best price for only $499. There's the QR code if you want to scan that. In fact, let me put the, I'll put the link in the chat in a minute here. But that that's a steal. So I also know that things are better in a group. And that group discussion, there's nothing like that. And it's unique every time we meet. So I offer a VIP experience. It's only limited to 10 people. So you're going to want to jump on this really quick. It's six weeks of group coaching. So we go through one module a week. Not just the module, but we're going to be talking about specific topics like boundaries, like habits, like emotions, and going into deeper into that and then any Q&A. So it's six weeks of group coaching. That's worth $2,400 because you get everything in the basic package plus the group coaching. But I'm gonna give that to you for $7.99 when you pay in full. I also have payment plans if you're interested in that. I know I like to do the payment plan just because I can budget it 
better. But for the VIP experience, which you're not going to want to miss, so jump on it quickly because there's only 10 spots available. Register here and I'll put the link in the chat in a minute. All you do is go to my website. Choose which one you want. You want the basic pay in full or payment plan or the VIP pay in full or payment plan. And that'll bring you to the checkout page, the payment page, and it's that easy. So I want you to remember why you came here. Why did you join this webinar? You were looking for something. I want you to be reminded that you have the power to live your life on your terms. Here's some uh, words from some of the Self-Awareness Academy students I've had in the past. Nina F, she's a type three. She says, my mind is blown. I can't believe what a difference knowing about the Enneagram has made in my life. Melanie R, she's a type seven. She says, I feel like I'm in the driver's seat of my life. How many of you feel that? Like someone else is driving your life. And Jenny P, she's a type nine. She says, I love the idea of being able to do this course at my own pace and refer back to it. That's right, you get this course forever. You download it, and it's yours to keep. So what are you waiting for? Are you ready? I'm here for you with any questions that you have. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let me put in the chat. Oh, let me put in the chat that link for Self-Awareness Academy. Uh, this is the third time I have offered this. And every time I'm learning something new, I'm learning about you, I'm learning about myself, I'm learning about how to use this tool in my everyday life. The more you use something, the easier it gets, right? Um, I think of tool, when I think of tools, I think of my husband's uh, tool bench in the garage. He's got a bunch of tools. He's not a real fix it kind of guy, but he's got a lot of tools. But if you don't know how to use the tool, what good is it, right? It's just sitting there in the toolbox. You have this tool and I wanna show you how to use it because it's important to me that you live the life that you desire, that you truly want. So I'm looking forward to meeting you, seeing you in Self-Awareness Academy. Please reach out if you have any questions, um, but we are gonna start that first week in February so grab your spot for the VIP experience and I'll see you in there. Thanks for coming.